Thank you, Marco. Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the session. Welcome to our presentation um, titled Usage and Contribution and of Free and Open Source so Software at Gisco. And I need to correct Marco. Sorry, Gisco stands for Geographic Information Service Coordination of the Commission. So, sorry, Commission is good in creating acronyms. And that's the reason this acronym exists since over 20 years. You know, so if you're asking why are we called Disco, why are we placed in Eurostat, don't ask me. Legacy, Legacy Act, since 20 years we are there. Uh, probably back then someone said, we are GIS, they belong to the statistical office. I'm standing here um, on behalf of my colleagues from the Gisco team. Um, we're a small team of 12 people, and I just want to talk to you a little bit about what and how we're doing and uh, free and open source. Um, just one point in the beginning. Um, we have been moving our GIS activities from a closed S3 shop, which we have been nine years ago, to, into a mixed environment. We got accused by an S3 representative, you are only doing open source. Our response was, that's not true. We just moved into a mixed environment. So for certain parts, we're still using S3 software. Fine. There's, this is, there's a dedication or there's, there's a reason for being in a mixed environment. For certain things, we're doing it purely free and open. For certain things, not. Depends. And this is our advantage now. So talking about Disco, um, how many of you have heard about Disco in the past? I know I have seen member states speaking. Yes, I know. Uh, someone else? No? OK, then I need to introduce it. Um, sorry for the people who already know me, who know what we're doing. It will be boring, but for the rest. Um, we're a permanent GS service, like a, we're a service provider for Eurostat, like we're doing analytics, um, like road uh, distance matrices. Uh, we're a service provider for the commission, so we are buying data from the national mapping agencies via Eurogeographics, from commercial data providers, we get data from OpenStreetMap, NASA, Natural Earth, whatever. We get that together, ship it out, and we coordinate in partnership with the, also with the member states. Just to give you an example, um, what we're doing there, I mean, if you go to Eurostat website and look at Euro, Euro, regions in Europe, statistics visualized, we provide their um, development support the GIS data for applications or um, software development like that. Um, if we're talking service provider for the EC, uh, during Corona, we, have, um, we went actually to all the member states organization and located where the hospitals are. We didn't have a da database, a complete database of Europe yet. And we have compiled a pan-European data set of healthcare locations in the member states. And then we also do this kind of work with the member states where we funnel dedicated grants to statistical offices as well as uh, national mapping agencies uh, where we're trying to bring together statistics and geospatial information um, so to move the whole world in that respect forward. Um, just talked yesterday to a colleague from Slovenia where we funded a project probably eight years six, years, six years, six years ago, don't don't hassle me for that one. And he said, yes, it's still running, and you were instrumental moving us forward in that direction. Just to give you a couple of ex examples. Um, to make it more practical for you, what are we talking about? What are you doing for GIS? Uh, so we are the guys actually responsible in the commission um, for the country data set. Which countries do we recognize? at least from the geospatial side. Um, this is, for you, maybe is simple. But I mean, in the commission, you have, have to always draw the correct boundaries. So do we recognize Kosovo or not? And we're working together with the publications officer and the council for political agreements. And we sort out all, all these kind of um, political issues. We also disseminate regions and Laos, population distribution, addresses, geographical names, all these kind of things, transport networks. 
Um, you find it here at the bottom, there's a URL. Uh, this is the kind of data sets you, which you find in public dissemination. We have all that in a, uh, our reference database where it's a little bit more uh, detailed because uh, due to license agreements, um, uh, we cannot share all this data um, uh, with the highest resolutions. Um, yeah, just a nice screenshot here done by our colleague uh, Joe Davis. Um, he has really nicely rendered uh, the Greek islands or the Greek state uh, based on Copernicus data. Just to give you an example. Copernicus data you can also get from the ESA and uh, uh, other di dissemination channels. We just have uh, brought them together in 10 by 10 degrees tiles so people can more easily work with this kind of data. So in general, I would like to well, conclude that part from JISCO's side. What are we doing? We're trying to localize, analyze, visualize uh, GIS data, uh, bringing in different software packages, trying to coordinate inside, listening to our users, responding to that one, bringing them together, coming to a common understanding, and then rolling out solutions to them as well. Um, now, before I'm going to the main part, I just want to introduce two concepts here, um, bringing us a little bit outside the um, our, GI, our IT focus domain. Um, we are working also with the United Nations, there's this UNGGM, and there we have the Global Statistical Geospatial Framework. And, you know, as a public servant, my duty is to support decision making. This is a little green bar down at the bottom here. But for that one, we need to have do analysis. And then we need to have an output for that one. So we need to have harmonized and standardized information. We need to have interoperability, comparability. And I don't think I need to convince here the already convinced. You know? But to bring it into practice, this is really hard to talk with member states, to talk with different organizations, that they are all harmonized, that they're all working at the same level. Um, just to put it into context so you see where we are playing, because we want to support our decision makers, and we play the whole chain from using a fundamental geospatial structure and geocoding, providing services for that one, even up to disseminating the nuts geometries so people can visualize it and can make maps or analytics part of, out of that one. So we are at the interface of uh, this workflow here. Um, the second thing which I would like to introduce here, and maybe this is completely discoupled from the rest of the presentation, is APIs. You're all aware of APIs, I assume so. But I mean, this is a big mindset change for quite a many of people which are used to monolithic applications. They're not used to APIs. They're not used to have an endpoint which they can do. They want to click and click off a button, you know? with a user interface that's, wow, we can do something. No, no, we want to have an API plus a human front end to that one. We learned it the hard way. And with that one, we can contribute to a wide variety of things, open government, to modernize public administration. Systems can talk to each other from European interoperability framework. And we can also contribute to the provide only once um, uh, or the once only principle. So data are shipped in to a commission service and is used everywhere and not that everyone needs to import it. This is a mindset change. It requires significant uh, efforts for that one. Uh, you can read further in the GSC B6 APIs for digital government study reports on that one if you are interested. So how do we do that um, from JISCO? We provide corporate level services. And for that one, we have a couple of concepts there which we learned over the last couple of years. Um, an API is not enough. Uh, we always need to add, or we, we try to add a human-friendly interface on top of that one. We learned the hard way performance, 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 and security, security, security. Um, sorry, Thomas was earlier here on stage. This is our requirements from security. I'm coming from research. I mean, before that, you know, as a researcher, you code 
you are, oh, it's running, it's working. Hmm? Yeah, fine. If you're in a professional software, you focus on performance and security, and you will see later on what we have done on security, what we have done, and how we contribute back, actually, the, to the community. And um, we document everything, and also for the public ones, we have also JSON documentation, all these kind of things. Just, I want to give you now a couple of examples of what we are doing for corporate level services, so I can show you where and how we use free and open source software. So we provide background maps, geocoding, routing, ID service image, dissemination. Um, so here, for example, um, image is uh, on the right side, uh, dissemination example, and uh, I will go into these different uh, aspects in a couple. So we find geocoding, find a location service uh, internal, internally uh, to the commission. Uh, we have, um, for search as you type, around 500,000 requests a day. Uh, we have detailed record search, geographical name search, a batch geocoding interface uh, on top of a nominatum instance, and we have our European register of addresses, which we have even developed in-house. Um, for that one, we use Postgres nominatum for tone. Um, I think Sarah, has a, Sarah Hoffman has a talk, I think now or later on, and we're really grateful for the work uh, which they are doing there, uh, maintaining this one, and we have also contributed back with uh, some fixes to this kind of software. Because sometimes you get the edge case, cases to us, uh, which, which then needs to be addressed. Because uh, sometimes these processes are used quite heavily, and you will be alerted on all the kind of edge cases where the data sets are not correct, where it's just across the border. Um, just one example here. Uh, one day a colleague comes to us and says, uh, look, I need to I have here all the Erasmus students of Europe, and we want to do an analysis. Well, so we talk half an hour, we show them all the APIs. A couple of months later, he presents in one of our uh, meetings, uh, which we have internally in the commission about GIS, and he says, initially we had estimated three years for that one. We are done after three months. Thank you for your services, just due to this one because they could, could use it and um, um, rapidly ac accelerate uh, their results. Um, we have built ourselves an endpoint which is called Ardis API or European Register of Ardises, where we have compiled all the national mapping or national data from Ardises based on Node.js, Postgres, Swagger, um, which we identified as one of the root causes in the commission because have you ever entered an address yourself? Yes, no, maybe? Any one of you? How many times are you entering it in a free form text field? And if you get that, sorry, we get it, in production, you get five million records of free form texts, not separated, 50 different spellings of the same road, all these kind of issues, you need to sort it. And for that one, we built a service so you can validate against the authoritative data information. And then you, we can say, yes, this road does not exist officially. So we cannot accept it. And this goes in all our contracts, in Cordis, in uh, um, Horizon 2020, you know, all this. And we tackle with that one the issue of non-validated data entry. It costs you 1% of the cost if you fix it at data entry. It costs you 10% of the cost if you fix it afterwards. But it costs you 100% if your emergency vehicle cannot reach the location given in the address or is at the wrong location. You know, this is the point why we have developed it and, and shipped it out to, to our colleagues. Second example, ID service, just a simple identify but we have really made it much more simple. You just put in coordinates and you can convert what between different data sets. Um, just to give an example of what we're doing here, again, Postgres in the, in the back end. We also ship out feature and vector services. Um, uh, we use uh, PG feature surf, PG tile surf for that one, again, based on, uh, on top of a Postgres instance to ship out our data sets to our customers. Um, and here again, uh, I want to spend two minutes on how do we contribute uh, back to the community. We have done vulnerability tests on 
a range of software packages which are running in production with us. We have done it for MapProxy, we have done it for open source Geo Network, and we even have contributed fixes back then with GeoCAD uh, as they were a contractor back then with us. Uh, we have uh, evaluated uh, PG Feature Surf and PG Tile Surf, there was just minor issues there. And this is a kind of feedback where we are contributing back to the free and open source uh, community. Uh, if you have further questions to me, I mean, we are not doing that in the public, in the open. We do it behind the scenes. We usually contact uh, the core contributor, asking them if they are interested. Um, if we have resources, we can also contribute fixes of identified issues. But I mean, this is a kind of contribution which we are trying to do from our side to that one. Uh, last service I would just uh, uh, move on uh, is visualization. Um, we provide a wide variety of uh, background maps um, based on MapNIC, MapProxy, uh, PostGIS, global extent. This is our most used product. On a given day, we have 5 million users around, um, even including uh, um, multilingual EU languages, and we adapt the OpenStreetMap to the position of the European Commission uh, because OpenStreetMap, as you are aware, maps the situation on the ground. Uh, we need to reflect that one, and this uh, requires some resources. In the last five minutes, I want to showcase to you some of the other things which we are doing in the visualization domain, where we also uh, contribute back to the uh, open source community, even the GIS. So we have a library called Eurostat Map GIS based on uh, D3, and it allows us uh, statistical visualizations. You see a couple of examples here. Um, GitHub URL is at the bottom. Um, we use it ourselves for a product called Image, which stands for Interactive Map Generator, um, which is a tool which we ship out to our policy um, DGs. So you have the policy officers, and here's an Excel sheet with a country code or nuts and with a value. And within five minutes, they upload the Excel file or 10 minutes, they can get a predefined map, tip, tam, um, map ready for inclusion in a PowerPoint presentation, in a web page, uh, in, in a press a template, in a document, A4 format, ready to be shipped out. And we don't need to do this standard maps, let's say but we control the cartographic language, we control the map design, and we're not having 50 different maps in a document. Have seen that in, in, in other publications, so we try to do that, at least from a cartographic language point of view. And we estimate, or not estimate, we know from monitoring, we, we create 250 maps a map, map, maps a month with that tool, which is not coming down to us for that one. You're welcome, you can even use it yourself. It's at, available at gisco-service.ec.europa backslash image. Uh, you just need an EU login and you can go in and do it yourself. We are in the process to publish it also to the open source repository of the commission. Um, for that one, we need to do one, two more things before we can do that. So, uh, but it's on the legal side uh, more than on, on, the, on the technical side. So, um, more is here on Gridvis and Dorling cartogram, so um, we do quite a bit of visualization also uh, based on free and open source and uh, bring it out so you can uh, reuse it. You're welcome to do so. I want to complete, conclude the overview with a couple of analytics tools. We have the region simplify tool here, which we're using to generalize our data sets. Uh, across scales, so from 100,000 uh, K data sets to 20 million, 60 million, something like that, with a grid, grid maker or geodiff uh, uh, um, libraries to change or to look at differences between data sets, uh, which people are welcome to use for their production usage. I've talked mainly today about um, what we're doing at services, but uh, we have also other Phos4G fun, fun facts here. Um, some people, some facts are left out. Um, as of Monday, we had fifth, over 500 installations of, um, let's say, the OS Geo suite. So we have QGIS, GRAS, Saga, and GDAL. Um, 
I need to pun now my colleagues from GRC because they are in a separate IT ecosystem, so I don't know how many QGIS installations are down there, but I mean in the, in the main commission, let's put it that way, because we are differently, like there's a research arm of the commission in the GRC. So we have over 500, we have managed to get Postgres as a database uh, recently, and we also do some training on uh, free and open source software. So coming up with a summary, um, I hope I made my story here to you. Uh, we are a service based on Eurostat to the commission. We serve a wide variety of services based on free and open source software, um, APIs plus human-friendly interface based on OGC API standards. Uh, is key to success. We serve around 5 million users a day. Um, we contribute back with vulnerability fixes, with uh, bug fixing if we have. Sometimes we also develop our own solutions if we don't find anything on the market and put it on our own open license. I want to conclude my talk, because I see already I'm, I'm off, uh, with one sentence here. Change is hard, don't get frustrated, especially if you're working in public administration. I, I see you laughing, thank you. I accomplished my mission.